Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Thailand and welcome to Worm Bin Weekends Week 6. Week 5 was Rescue Mission Week. It was me making every effort possible to save as many of the worms out of the bins after, a, after just an absolute failure of a rice feeding from week 4. And if you saw those videos, you saw that we came out with 151 worms. Well, as I was checking the bins after I put that slurry of vegetables and bedding into the, into the bins to try to raise the temperature and get the thermophiles finally get in there, um, none of the bins ever actually went thermophilic, which tells me they probably did with the feeding of the rice back in week four. However, there were a couple additional worms that showed up in bins two and three, so we actually wound up with 153 worms. Now my guy, my supplier, I finally got in touch with him, I explained to him what happened, and he said, my pen rai, which means, never mind, it's okay, I'll take care of you, it's fine. Um, and so I was like, that's great. So I figured he was gonna be bringing me, you know, somewhere in the area of about four to 500 worms. The night before, what I did was I took the 153 and I put them all into bin number one. And as you can see, they were still kind of mixed in with the leaf bedding. But bin one has been the coolest bin of all three, and so I just figured that was the best place for him to go until these other ones got here. I was expecting him to bring me around four to 500 worms top, so I asked for a half kilo. He brought me a thousand worms. Now, long story short, I did not get a lot of sleep before he showed up. I was dead tired, so I didn't get any of this on video, but he brought a thousand worms. I thanked him, I paid him. I put them into bins one, two, and three as best I could, equally distributed across all three bins. And I went to sleep. The next day when I woke up, they were everywhere. They had literally lifted the, the lid off of the top of bin three. I mean, they were in the, they were in the, in the top of the, of the lid, they were in the sides, they were in the handles, they were in the water tub, they were everywhere. And so I finally said, you know what, I've got to address this heating issue. So what I did is I took the lids off of bins two and three. Now, this is not a really sustainable solution, but it's workable for right now. The reason it's not sustainable is not so much from a security standpoint, but my main concern is, is that these bins will now dry out very quickly with the lids off. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna redesign the configuration of the water tub, and what basically that is is just fancy talker saying I'm gonna get two more water tubs. Each one of the bins is going to have its own individual water tub. Um, a little bit smaller than the one that they're currently in. Probably going to be about the size of the bin that the worm food is currently residing in. So that way I can uh, more easily manage each one of the bins. It's easier for me to heat them up than it is for me to cool them down. But if I have them in an individual water tub, each one of them will probably be able to manage to maintain the same around temperatures. And that way I don't have to worry about overheating with the bins that are sitting above you know, the one that's submerged in the water. Um, Anyway, that's, that's the plan that I'm going to try to execute on. Right now, this is week six, we're going to check in on each one of these individual bins and see how our new friends and our old friends are doing together. So let's go take a look. All right, week six, bin one. Now, a couple things that I didn't mention in the opening. Um, for the first time since this configuration has been in place, Bin one has now turned out to be the hottest of the three bins, and that's obviously because the lids are off on bins two and three. The other thing that I didn't mention is uh, the worm food. The worm food is still in the process of being processed. I think I almost have it ready to go. <laughs> I say I think because I haven't checked it in a week on purpose because I want to see if any larvae try to get out of the bin. Um, they have been, and I've caught them, luckily, and I've checked, and thankfully they have not pupated anywhere around my home, but um, I'm thinking about either one of two things. Either one, I'm going to seal the bin with tape, and I'm gonna freeze it in the water tub with ice so that it gets below 32 degrees, because if that happens, the larva will die, and any remaining larva will then just become warm food in addition to what's already in there. Either that, or I'm just gonna wait them out. Um, I'm really not in a hurry as much as I would like to be feeding this to the worms right now. Uh, we're just gonna wait, and I'm just gonna try to do this as best I can. That's another process that I'm obviously going to have to refine moving forward. But anyway, there's all the particulars. Let's dig in. Now, the lid on bin one has remained on. I haven't checked it except for when I, the, uh, the worms came in uh, back on Tuesday. So uh, let's see what we got here. Okay. 
pretty fair amount of condensation. Some fruit flies too. Let's see what's going up on the sides. Now, there were only, when I was taking bin one out tonight, four worms in the water tub, and that's the other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, since I took the lids off of bins two and bins three, there's been no evacuations. They've just been staying in the bin. Now, bin one is the one that received the 153 worms from our original batch. It received a mess of others that came in from the batch of 1,000 that I just received this past Tuesday. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how things look. It's really wet in here though, that I can tell you. Uh, where the other two are gonna be really dry, this is extremely wet stuff right now. expected with the lids on and that's why I'm always going to be as generous as I can with the bedding. Plenty of worms to start with. That's what we've got here. The bins have not been getting over 82 degrees now because thankfully um, you know the weather is finally starting to cool now here as we're getting into the month of October. Had I waited just two weeks before adding that white rice it may have worked because I don't know that I can actually say that without having individual water tubs for each bin, but it definitely is a lot cooler. I mean, we were still in the 90s, which I know, you know, is, is moderately warm for some places back in the U.S. even still today. But um, you know, it, that kind of heat here in Thailand also carries a lot of humidity with it. And inside of a bin, if the outside temperature is 90 degrees, the inside temperature of a bin is usually about 10 degrees higher at a minimum. So, yeah, this is going to require the better maintenance or management of the bins as far as the heat goes but uh yeah we got plenty of worms here and it really looks like they're uh they're enjoying the bedding for sure um today we're going to be adding crushed up leaves uh because the one other thing i forgot to mention when uh when the worms showed up on tuesday i added more brown cardboard bedding and i also added some grit and that grit came in the form of my compost. I added a, a full cup of it per bin. Uh, that way just they've got some grit going on in here. Um, I eventually probably will add some more eggshell if necessary and that will only come if necessary by the way of uh, by way of the food still not being ready because that also again as I've said many times before has a lot of grit in it. Wow this guy I can get him was stretched out. I didn't mean to do that to him. Because these are huge worms. They're amazing. So, bin one has always had a nice, healthy population. I mean, like I said, it really saved the project. I mean, this is where 148 worms came from back in week five. And when I added some of the, the new ones from the batch that the guy brought to me, uh, that was all done just in an effort to try to boost the numbers here somewhere in the area of about two to three hundred. Some of these back in. sad thing is that uh, the ties do usually when it starts getting cold they start to burn their fields quite a bit so our air quality goes down but um, until that starts to happen uh, the mountains in this area and the air and the sky and just everything it's just it's, it's gorgeous 
so not breaking. Oh yeah, they're not completely gone dry. It just rained and I picked a lot of this up during the rain, but that'll help dry things out a little bit. And again, it's just another food source for them. I am gonna give them a very light feeding today of um, mostly banana peels. What am I saying? It's all banana peels. Um, and we get a really nice healthy population of worms going on here, guys. They're not all balled up or anything like that, but I mean, just as I pick through, I'm able to find them quite easily in their bedding. So, yeah, this is this is looking more like how I was hoping it was eventually going to start to look, but uh, yeah, two right there. One of my first two fingers and one here on my third. It's just going to take time to um, get everything reestablished again, but they're they're looking good, and, and most importantly, they look healthy, and I hope that translates into happy as well. There's a nice group of worms. Yeah. Few mites, few fruit flies, not many. That's good. healthy population going on again and like I said bin one has really been that way all along it's been really really good so quite happy with how they're looking and they look healthy when worms are not evacuating their bin and you're able to maintain the temps I mean the temperature on all three of the bins have not exceeded 82 degrees and this one's been the hottest um, and they get down in the evenings right down to about 77. Those are very comfortable temperatures for these worms. African night crawlers like it hotter than usual. Um, but those temps right there, they're very happy. And I'm not surprised just to find them down in the bedding here, just doing their thing and enjoying their environment. The nice thing about this, these uh, dried up leaves also is that they just, they not only provide a bedding, but they, they provide a nice nutrient source. They're also food. The worms will eat this eventually as it breaks down. And uh, it just, you wind up with even richer castings. I love the look of castings, uh, the worm castings from these brown leaves. It's just, it's really nice.
now we're gonna give them a small feeding. Right here in the middle, where I've already got a lot of brown leaf material. I'll put some more. This is just some banana peels from some Thai bananas. Nothing special. I'll be right back. I'm using a lot of dry leaves on bin one here because I knew it was going to be wet compared to bins two and three on Sherbet. Um, you'll see when I get to those bins. With the lid being off, uh, I think it's probably dried out quite a bit. It, it's not that it's going to be bone dry, there's obviously going to be moisture and stuff in there. Um, but I may have to add a little moisture to those bins. We'll see. So, nothing special, just some banana peels. Okay, so just some tasty foods. And again, grit has already been previously applied uh, the day before the new batch arrived in the way of compost. So we're good in the grit department. Previously, you know, a while ago, there was some crushed up eggshell that was added, which has probably been used at this point. Maybe, I don't know. With all the events that have gone on in this bin, it's hard to say. But there's definitely grit in here is the point. Now I'm going to try something that A.B. does with his bins. I don't know if you guys have watched A.B.'s channel or not. I think my buddy Noel Davis over at Wolf Composting has been starting to do this as well. And I really like the look of the bin. It gives it kind of a natural look. Um, what he does is he takes dried up leaves, he crumbles them up, he crushes them up, and he just covers it on the top. It gives it a really nice and natural look. So we're going to try that and see how that works. I probably should have crumbled the stuff up uh, before I got on camera tonight, but um, you know, <laughs> maybe I'll edit it out or at least speed it up. I don't want to bore you guys too much. My last video for week five was almost a half hour long, and the original unedited copy of that was actually over an hour. So, yeah. Yeah, and the, one of the other things that's really been kind of nice, even with the moisture and then one here, there's been no like putrefying smells or anything like that going on in these bins. Uh, not even in bins two and three. So that tells me that even though the moisture's in here, it's it's been pretty balanced. It's it, I know it looks really wet, but trust me, it's not soft and wet. It's just, it's muddy. If I can say it like that, it's just really muddy. Um, and that's fine. Like I said, I would rather have the bin like this than too dry because it forces the worm to really have to push through the material. And one of the theories, and I know that Noel from World Composting will share this with you, um, he thinks that it not only makes the worm stronger and healthier, but it definitely makes them a little bit bigger to be in a wetter bin. Drier bins, they seem to get really small, and I've seen that as well in the past. It made me think of some occasions in the past where I'd seen this happen as well. And so it definitely makes sense, but and I really am linking the look at this already. I got a 
feeling that these materials are going to get really wet between weeks. Um, so it looks nice now. I'm sure it'll be very moist next weekend, for week seven. But uh, we'll see. There's definitely plenty of food in this bin. I probably didn't even need to give it any food. But I decided I wanted to just because, you know, the worms have uh, they've been through a lot. And I want to give them something that's along the lines of comfort food. Bananas and banana peels seem to be a really big favorite of the worms. I don't know what it is about them. I don't, it's obviously something to do with the nutrients in there. Um, but uh, they just, they really, they usually gather around it like crazy. And now that the bins have all been you know, properly cycled, and even though I didn't see it go thermophilic after adding the vegetable slurry, I have a feeling the reason, it, it went to mesophilic, but I have a feeling the thermophiles already got in there when the rice got added, I just didn't see it. That's my, uh, well, that's my uneducated guess because, I mean, you saw what I added. I added, it was a Thai eggplant, cucumber, and cabbage. So, just even those three vegetables by themselves, not including which way I, I would normally also include tomato, chili, and squash. Uh, but those three vegetables alone are more than enough to get a bin hot. I'm talking thermophilic hot if the thermophiles are not already there. And so my belief is, is that that's why I didn't see it spike all the way up to like 120, 130s. Like I was really hoping because I think it already went there. That right there is what AB does. He makes it really nice and natural looking and I like the look. And I think this is more than enough at this point. All right. That's been one. Our population is looking good. Our buddies are looking happy. They've had things fluffed up a little bit for them. They've been fed. They've been given a nice little natural looking cover. I'm going to put the lid back on them and put them back in the water tub and they're going to be good for another week. I want to thank you guys for joining me. If you haven't already, please do like and share this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you will. Hit the bell notification icon for future content when I upload it. And until next time, wherever you are in this world today or tonight, take care. Bye for now.